Hello everyone! Welcome to or welcome back to the Citigo Rider channel. My name is Nkechi and for today we are going to put on our thinker caps on so we can come up with our own theories and predictions for the Locked Tomb series finale, Elect of the Ninth. Now, word of caution. Naturally, if we're going to talk about theories and predictions, we are going to be spoiling the entire series thus far. If you have not read Gideon the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth, or Nona the Ninth, then please proceed to click out on this video, read those books, then come here. All right? Or if you just want a general thoughts on the actual books that I have read, then I will link up above the wrap-ups that I have read these books in since I have read them this year. And yeah, you can all check from all that up above or in the description, whichever way I decide to include all the information. So again, all the, the only thing we know as far as Nona the Ninth is that hell will break loose and elect the Ninth. We have no cover, no synopsis. We don't even have an official release date except for the fact that it has been pushed to 2024. Now, let's start with actually some, I want to say it's surface level, but like it does leave an impression on the series, is we just need to talk about the cover. Let's think about, let's think some cover ideas here, okay? Because as you could tell, these covers, these are created by Tommy Arnold, did such an amazing job with these covers, just like without the actual like design, just the actual cover art itself is amazing we just have our protagonist right there in the middle with some cool stuff in the background and of course we have bones so obviously elect of the ninth has to have that pretty much that exact same feeling otherwise it's not a lock tomb series book right so here's my theory so imagine the cover right i'm going to use nona the ninth since pretty much nona and electo are pretty much one and the same except the, the, of course this is harold's body you know so we will have the background here right but it'll be really dark but there will be also some smoke because again, hell, right? So maybe, maybe not quite that fiery kind of feel, but more smoky in color. Maybe like, um, maybe something reminiscent of Gideon the Ninth a little bit. Maybe, maybe. And of course it'd be like smoke or indoor fire. It's like, maybe, maybe there will be fire, but honestly I'm more in the smoke side. And there'll be lots of bones, of course, but not quite like in Gideon the Ninth. Maybe something kind of like the amount of bones here in Nona, but a little bit different. And then... We'll have Electo in the middle, of course. But since she's in the middle here, I think she'll also have, still have chains on her. Linked to her throat, her ankles, and her wrists. And then she'll have, like, a sword on her back. She'll still, she'll actually have Gideon's sword, just very much like in Harrow. I'm only thinking about this cover in this kind of way because of, like, there's actually a fan art I saw on Twitter uh, several weeks ago. That was pretty much inspired by, like, the Barbie meme trend. If you're, you know, when the first trailer of Barbie, the movie, was coming out, people had making memes of the of the Barbie, like, oh, this Barbie is this, or I am Barbie, something like that. So there was actually a Barbie meme fan art of Electo in it. And I will link the fan art in the description as well so y'all can support the artist, you know. And then, um, of course, the, the, lock, the links and chains and all that stuff from around her neck and around her wrist and even some of her ankles still because even though she is free she's not she's physically free but i don't think she will be considered as mentally or emotionally free which we'll definitely talk about more when i think about the themes and some other things as well but that's how that's what i think about the cover now next up the dramatis personae yeah, I'm going to be starting about the Dramatis Personae as well. We're going to start getting to the front matter of these books. So, Dramatis Personae, because every single one of these books always start up with a Dramatis Personae. Now, I believe that the Dramatis Personae in Electo will feature... Well, not... Well, yeah, it will... I feel like it will feature the Resurrection Beast, because, again, Electo is a human-like construct of the remnant souls of Earth... So in a way, she's also a resurrection beast. That's not like the other ones. Maybe not quite resurrection beast, but she is able to communicate with them. Which still gives, gives me the idea like, yeah, if she can communicate with them, then like she she's pretty much like them, but just different because of the way that she her physical form is. Because the resurrection beast is literally the th the th energy of, de of the souls from the other planets within the within around Dominicus. So I do think the resurrection beast would be featured in Dramatis Personae. Of course, some... Uh, leftover characters like Gideon, Iante, Pyrrha, Paul, um, anyone from Blood of Eden, as well as maybe like Coronabeth and 
Um, maybe Captain Judith might be in there too, along with some other Blood of Eden members or some other characters maybe that are we don't know of, that they're going to be here. And then we have the Resurrection Beast. And then I also think the tower will be a major thing in this, in the, in this finale. And this is a stretch because... The tower was actually a pretty quick thing in Nona Knight, at least towards the end of it. But it did, it was interesting to me on how I saw that, the, at least according to what I interpreted from the novel, is that the tower seemed to have an effect on Nona. And I also believe that the Resurrection Beasts were able to communicate through the tower as well. And since um, Nona, no, well, not Nona, since Electo is a Resurrection Beast as well in a human con- human-like construct, it would kind of make sense that something about the tower would mess with her a little bit i don't know why again i don't know why but i do feel like electo the ninth will explore that and also maybe the tower could represent hell or something the part of hell that has wrecked that's gone loose i don't know if i mentioned it in the wrap-up that i've read known in the ninth but there were actually the john chapters was a secret code actually like the number part not the actual bible verses themselves i actually thought the bible verses were like part of a code or something like the there's something regarding the bible verses themselves poor me all that work only for me to find out because i actually had to look at this through a reddit thread because i really could not figure out what the point of these john the actual title of the john chapter so according to i don't remember who it was who said this but there is a thread i will also link that down below in the description there is a thread that someone mentioned someone actually decoded the numerical code numbers into actually like oh the numbers are referring to letters and there actually was a message it says the tower has reactivated now i don't know how the tower was was reactivated i don't know what that means to be reactivated like wait so it was deactivated before and now it's be reacted evaded now i don't know what but again if that's the message of towards for known in the ninth i have a pretty big feeling and that's also a sneaky cipher that tim zebra put in there if that's what it was then I'm like so this tower thing then is gonna be very important which is why a lot of the stuff i'm gonna be talking about here is gonna be regarding the tower and how that's gonna relate to our synopsis because something about this tower is not seeming right so we we need to we need to figure that out can i figure that out now as far as what the tower means nope Mm-mm. But that's what I think about the Dramatis Persona. I can't really say on format because I'm going to let... I'm not going to try to theorize on that or predict on that one because... Muir can have that, okay? The next thing I also want to talk about is the poem. Because each one of these books also features a poem in the very beginning. At least in Note of the Ninth, it does feature the poem for Hero the Ninth, which... I do want to quickly just read out loud just for anyone who hasn't, didn't really remember it, but I just want to do it for fun anyways, because why not? One for the emperor, first of us all. One for his lictors who answered the call. One for his saints who were chosen of old. One for his hands and the swords that they hold. Two is for discipline, heedless of trial. Three for the gleam of a jewel or a smile. Four for fidelity facing ahead. Five for tradition and depths to the dead. Six for the truth over solace and lies. Seven for beauty that blossoms and dies. Eight for salvation no matter the cost. Nine for the tomb and for all that was lost. Now I also want to quickly just read the poem that was in Known in the Ninth. You told me, sleep, I'll wake you in the morning. I asked, what is morning? And you said, when everyone who fucked with me is dead. When everyone we loved has gone or fled. That's morning. Empty is just another word for clean. Let's put this first draft dream of mine to bed. In the appointed hour, I'll pull up your sheets. I'll kill the light, lie down beside you, die, and sleep the night. This time will be the time we get it right. Forgiveness not so hard, no anger, lo- no anger long. Our graves will be less deep, our lies less true. You held aloft the sword. I still love you. Now, why did I read these poems? One, because I just felt like it. And then two, just to like give y'all an idea of like what these poems were written for the different kind of tone and themes that we would be focusing on the books themselves. Now, in Electo the Ninth, I can't quite say on how it will really work. I think the poem for Electo, as far as in format, it's definitely not going to be anything like it was in Gideon or Harrow. Definitely not, because... 
the way I think the actual plot of the book is going to go is not going to be following any, regarding any of the nine houses at all. I mean, it's very clear with Nona. And since Nona was originally the first act of Electo, it makes sense that it will be more... The poem for Electo the Ninth will be more similar to Nona the Ninth's poem. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really say on, like, the actual topic and stuff. I don't even know who's going to be saying to who. That's just me personally. I do not know. But I do believe that the poem will have themes of anger, heartbreak, vengeance. Now, because we can tell from the poem and note in the ninth that is more conversational between Electo and John. And talking about protection and care and even love, but also forgiveness and less about anger. But we all know how the end of now in the ninth happened. So clearly we're going to throw all that stuff away and be like, yeah. We're going on anger. We're going to be a, we're going to be vengeful, and there's going to be some heartbreak in the poem. So that's just how I, I believe the poem, the themes will be in the poem. I can't speak for actually what the poem's written, but hey, if any of y'all have an idea on how it's going to be written, y'all let me know. Like I would love to know. Now I do also want to like quickly talk about like maybe not like quite talk about, but I kind of want to show y'all a clip that I actually I found from a Reddit thread. That I can't remember which Reddit thread it was, but I'll still link it down below and I'll link this Instagram reel specifically because it actually was a clip from Tor.com publishing the Instagram account and showing uh, Tim Zumir actually reading a snippet. I think it was the very, yeah, a quick snippet of the very first chapter of Elect of the Ninth. So I'm just gonna roll the clip. Te Nakota, Torcon. Hi. Nice that you could be here with me tonight. I've got a special message for you all. Hi. Thought that what I could do for you is I could share with you a little bit of what I've been working on before it gets sold on eBay. So tonight I'd like to read to you a selection from the next book in the Locktomb series and definitely the last, Electo the Ninth. Electo the Ninth. Act One. Harrow in Hell. Chapter One. At a point in the slit she was carving through life, Harrow Harkno Nagesimus woke to find herself lost in a dark wound. She had been walking when it had all gone black. Any path ahead or behind was blotted out. Now she was here. A sword was laid upon her from shoulder to hip. Her feet were bare. Upon her chest, straddling the sword, there was an open magazine. The first thing she saw upon opening her eyes was a pair of tits. And I bet you can't wait to find out what happens next. Now, y'all have all read the, you all seen the clip now. And I have to say, I was like... Oh, so we we're starting out it with Harrowheart and Hell. Hmm, okay. Interesting, interesting. Now, I wanted to start off with talking about this opening clip because it pretty much inspired me into thinking up some, you know, theories and things and some predictions on how the narrative structure is going to work. Because I can't say, again, I don't like the synopsis itself, but I do have an idea on, the pl on what the plot could be. But it's really more on the structure here because the plot can definitely change. But if I'm right on the structure, then I still call it a win, okay? That's just me. Now, let's get to the narrative structure, which is very much inspired by this opening clip. So, thank you, Tor.com and Temzi Mir for that. Now, because I th actually thought that Elect of the Ninth was going to start off with more, you know, Electo's perspective. But since the fact we started off with Harris' perspective, unless it changes, it made me think like, oh, so this book is going to start off in dual POV then, right? So, I do believe that it will be in dual timeline. And I don't know necessarily, I'm not quite certain on how the dual timeline will go. I believe that it'll be kind of similar to it might be similar to how it was in Harold the Ninth where it was like we were counting down to something kind of like also even Noda we were also counting down to when the locked tomb opens but since the tomb is already open and Electo is free I believe it'll be a countdown to the end of Something, maybe like the end of the nine houses in both a metaphorical and a literal way. Not quite sure if that'll be right, but again, 
This is just a theory in my own head. Maybe more prediction than theory since I don't have actual evidence, but we'll see. So the dual timeline could be something that looks similar to Hero the Ninth with an air of like a Shakespeare tragedy. Which we'll definitely talk about a little bit more later. Or, if it's not in that sense, it'll be dual timeline moving through the time. Moving through time, like in the past to present. So I don't know how the time, how present and past would go. Because actually, especially if we're following Electo, it probably will not make any sense to show anything in the past. Because we need to know what's going on with Electo in the future. So, yeah, I think it would be not, I don't think it would be that alternate one. It might be like the dual timeline that would be somewhat more similar to Harrow. But then again, that one's still like past and present. I don't know. We're I just think we're doing a dual timeline. As far as how we're going to do it, I don't know. Now, regarding the structure as well. If this is dual timeline, then one of it, one of the timelines will be following Harrow. The other one will be following Electo. Now, the one following Harrow, I believe, will be short and in between, like, the actual main storyline, which is Electo. Very much similar to, like, Nona the Knife. I truly believe a lot of the... Actually, if it is dual timeline, then actually I don't think that the dual timeline will be following, like, Harrow the Knife. In fact, it should theoretically... Be following the timeline, at least the the speed of the timeline, like in Nona, you know? Since Nona and Electo used to be one book, so it actually makes more sense that the pacing in the timeline, and maybe, I don't think narrative structure. I do think a lot of Electo will be similar, somewhat similar to Nona, but not very similar. Like, I think it's still a noticeable difference, of course. But structurally, it could be similar. Like, we could actually have the short in-between chapters, just like the John chapters in Nona, but instead we're following... Harold's POV. So the writing and dialogue will be in Harold's POV. So with you, you know, we're in a very familiar perspective. But I do think there'll be some descriptions and or references to hell. Maybe like various versions of hell or what hell could mean in various cultures. Could be the same like biblical kind of hell or maybe it's just a different kind of hell. I don't know. I don't know what kind of version of hell she would choose, but just hell in general, basically. And then Electo's POV, the writing and dialogue would be... Well, the writing will still have Tamsimir's flair, but I do think that the dialogue would be very much similar to what it was in the end of Nona, which is very much Old English or Shakespeare-esque. Because I believe in maybe in Electo as a character will kind of maybe even represent the old world. Since, you know, she is a, you know, like a remnant of Earth, the dead souls of Earth. And because of that, she will be talking in a way that will be all dated, basically, in this modern work. Since it's more futuristic. So, she'll be pretty much the old world, the old version with older language. Because, like... If you remember the ending, the actual epilogue of Nona, the way it was written, it was so... The way that these characters spoke was very Shakespeare-like, and I was just... I was just like... What? It was very much Shakespeare-like, but also a hint of Frankenstein. Just just a hint of it, in some aspect. At least in mindset, it was just a hint giving Frankenstein. But we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But anyways, this is what I believe on the narrative structure regarding, like, the writing and the dialogue. But, you know, y'all leave your thoughts down below as well. Now, we're gonna get to the... Let's start getting to more of the fun part stuff, you know? Let's talk about themes. Because each book here... Every one of these books have, like, a central... Not, like, one particular theme, but it does have a pretty big theme. When we get to now Electo, it's definitely gonna be showing how... Yes, we can make that love and connection. I do think that the themes here are going to be like the those destructive themes of like you know revenge and anger and destruction and reckoning because of how you know we move from loyalty to grieving and maybe making new love and connection, but then you have the heartbreak of like after all we've been through. You're, especially with, like, Gideon and Harold, that they're still not able to come together, you know? Because we remember, our, protag our original protagonists were these two characters. I mean, now we're getting with Electo, too, which is an another thing we're going with those two characters now. So now they're even more interconnected than ever. But then you just see the how... I think we're going to see, like, how love is can turn corrosive and destructive. And how anger and hurt are going to be a leading emotional factor we're going in with loyalty. Because the character of Nona is someone who can who loves people. She loves to love. She's a caring, loving person. But then but that's a version of Electo who doesn't have her memories. But now that Electo does have her memories and she still is angry at John, it makes sense that she's gonna hold on to this anger. And we're gonna see that how she does still love John, 
But because of that, she's so angry that he practically just betrayed her and locked her in a tomb for thousands of years. And we're definitely going to see the result of that. We're going to see an entire reckoning in this book, in the Electo, the ninth. So, yeah, we're going to... We dive deep into that one, okay? Now, that's pretty much what I think for the theme or themes, really, for this book. Now, I also want to talk about references. Now, I can't really say anything about pop culture, the memes, or anything like that. But one thing I could notice, or something that I find intriguing, are literary and biblical references. Every single one of these books have some pretty blatant biblical and literary references. I can't really say for Gideon the Ninth because my head is so far removed from that book that I generally do not remember. Hair of the Ninth, I saw there was several, they gave a lot of literary references. I was like, wait, this is like referring to something like Greek, like maybe the Iliad or some other Greek myth and stuff. And there's definitely some biblical references. But then again, that's also because I've been raised Christian. So I can recognize some things that could have been referencing some aspects of the Bible. Have I studied the Bible? No. So I can't really, really say specifically, but like... Something about it, I could definitely tell when, like, okay, this reminds me for sure something about the Bible. At least in Harold. No, 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 they made it pretty blatantly clear. Especially with the Bible verses as chapter headings for John chapters. I was like, what? And, you know, again, like I said before, I was really searching up actually the Bible verses themselves. And only for me to find out I didn't need to do that. So, there's that. But one thing, though, I really do want to talk about for sure is, like, possible literary references, at least, and then we'll talk about the biblical ones. So, literary-wise, remember I was talking about, like, you know, like, the narrative structure being possibly regarding with, like, a Shakespeare tragedy? Mostly because I don't think this book is gonna have a happy ending. I don't think this series is gonna have a very happy ending. I think we'll have some sort of a tragic and it's either tragic or bittersweet. Now, I don't want to say that because I'm like, look, it could be true. I don't know how she's actually going to end this series. I don't know if she wants this, like, happy thing or happy for now kind of thing or, like, tragedy and heartbreak as far as the things were anger and vengeance and reckoning. So I don't think, y'all, this is going to have a happy ending, which is why I was thinking of Shakespeare tragedies specifically. Because what actually when I was thinking about Harold and I, I did look up a Tumblr post of someone going, writing down all, as many of the literary and biblical references as they could from Harold and I. I well, I don't think anyone did anything for Nona the Ninth, unfortunately. I only really wish they would, but that's okay, though. Harrow was very much clear on the literary and the biblical references, for sure. I mean, Nona more on the biblical than literary for me. I do believe that Electa will have a lot of Shakespearean, would be referencing towards Shakespearean tragedies, especially since the dialogue in Electo's point of view was Shakespeare-esque, or at least Old English. So, I'm just like, we're gonna be referencing some tragedies, huh? Because I don't think this is gonna be anything like a hit, like Shakespearean history or the Shakespearean comedies. I mean, she could reference a Shakespeare comedy in a very comedic, humorous times, of course. Obviously, she really could. But I'm gonna focus more on the tragedies. I don't know why she would reference these particular tragedies but i'm just pointing it here because i'm just i'm just guessing here so i do think there might be some references or at least a reference to hamlet do i really know why honestly no i just kind of want to see a reference to hamlet and then i do think there also might be some references to macbeth as well i think that's more in the sense of with more on harrow i think and then I think there'll be some references to King Lear. I think it'll be more with John, because I still think we're going to see a little bit more of John. And then another literary reference, besides the Shakespearean tragedies, Frankenstein. I think it's because of the fact that it is kind of obvious that the way that Electo was born in and made from John and the fantasy of, or remnant souls again of Earth, it does give Frankenstein. It does... I mean, in Nona, he does reference it more as, like, well, I don't think it was in Nona. I mean, it was probably in Nona, but I do remember more in Harold that he does reference it, the making of Electo as, like, her being his Adam, you know? Like, the very first thing he made, in a way? Which, I get that reference, but, like, I do think it might be more in the Frankenstein way, especially since, especially for Electo's POV, because it's kind of like how, like, in the book Frankenstein, we got the POV of the act of Frankenstein's monster. And I actually do think the monster was called Adam. So, I'm just saying, I'm like, the math is math in here, in my mind. The math is math in here. I don't know about y'all, but it works here. So, maybe 
we'll have more references from Frankenstein into Electo. Possibly. I do not know. But we'll see. That's just my opinions, though, okay? That's my opinion. Now, that's for the literary references. I do think for biblical references, again, I do not remember anything from Gideon the Ninth. But I do remember in Nona, of course, with the John chapters, and I did actually look up actual Bible verses for these things. It does references a lot with... It's... I don't want to quite talk too much about the Bible, especially on a internet space, but John, again, we, you don't, I mean, if you don't, John is a, one of the four Gospels in the book of, in the Bible, specifically in the New Testament. So it was really interesting to get, you know, especially make a character like John as God that, you know, again, has the title, like, name, face, name with the title of uh, one of the, I think one of the f- disciples of Jesus, I think? So I don't know about specific references, but it could possibly have some more references, not quite from the book of John, but maybe. But it could also have references to maybe of the other Gospels, or maybe it'll talk about the final book in the Bible called Revelation, which pretty much talks about, like, I think like an apocalypse, which would definitely fit the tone for the book, because apparently... There were multiple times in the Bible that talks about apocalypses and various visions of an apocalypse or even times when there was an apocalypse. So I'm just like, hmm, maybe there could be some more direct references to that as well or maybe specifically to the book of Revelation specifically. I don't really know. I I don't want to talk too much about it just for anyone, you know. Uh, and I, honestly, I'm not even that knowledgeable anyway, so it, it doesn't even matter. But that's just a quick thing on the biblical references. But as far as some other stuff, um, plot-wise, again, I do think that the nine houses will be destroyed. Maybe, di- it was saying, I, I was thinking at first maybe dismantle, but I don't think dismantle would be the right word for it. Because again, we're in hell. It's gonna be destroyed. And I also think that we'll be probably seeing the blood of Eden again. I think they'll have a, I don't know if they'll have more prominent of, of a role, but... I definitely believe that we'll see more of them for sure. And now the last thing I, I'm i gonna, I don't really have, this is not really a theory, this is just a prediction, is pretty much how long are these, is the final book gonna be? Let's do some, let's think some more, you know, let's think about this. Because how long the book is gonna be is very important, at least to me as a reader, because if I notice that your books have varying lengths that does not make any sense to me, I'm going to believe that there's a problem. It doesn't matter if it just ends up being way longer or just much shorter. I'm actually going to be really mad if it's much shorter. I won't be too, too mad if it's way longer, but I will be somewhat concerned, but, like, I'll be way more concerned if it's much shorter. Now, in the paperback, besides the whole extra stuff, the beginning of the ninth ends with 444 pages. Harold the ninth ends with 540 seven pages and then Nona ends with 477 pages so the longest book in this bunch here is Harrow so it's Harrow first then Nona and then Gideon oh wait was I right yes Gideon's the shortest one so the question is is Electo going to be longer than Harrow or roughly the same page length as Nona in my personal opinion I believe that um, Electo will be longer than Harold the Ninth. It will be at least 500 pages. No more than 550 pages. And that's before the paperback release. You know, it's like, it comes in a hardcover. I truly believe it's going to be at least 500 pages. Now, the most, I believe, will be 550 pages. Because there's, I truly believe there's going to be a lot to cover. So I do believe that Electo will be longer than, Har- than Harrow. Maybe not quite so, so much different in length. Maybe 525 so pretty much it'll be pretty much a, a tome. And that's before the pre, you know, before the extra material stuff you'll get from the paperback. Which, I don't know what the extra material will provide besides like a glossary and some other stuff, but who knows. Honestly, I can't really figure out on like the actual extra material. Because again, it's really just based upon the, whatever the actual plot is. The, I, I can't really figure out that far, y'all. So, y'all, that's pretty much it. That's all my theories and predictions for Elect of the Ninth. I will link down below a lot of, like, the Reddit threads, the fan art, some other, maybe extra material that could, like, help y'all as well. Maybe, like, also a website, too, you know, where I thought, where I found out about the, the Shakespeare tragedy stuff. I also link down below the Instagram reel as well, and, uh, 
and some other stuff as well. I will also link down below Reddit, other Reddit threads that actually also explain Harrow and Nona, just in case for any of y'all who don't quite remember what happened to Nona or Harrow for, for, you know, and also just link down below so many other stuff. So please look all that in the description. But anyways, thank you all again for coming to this video. Like it if you like this video. Subscribe. Make sure you press the bell for not to be notified when I upload another video. Comment below your theories and predictions. I actually would love to know about y'all's theories and predictions. Now, if you do not know what to comment and you just want to notify me that y'all made it to this end of the video, put the sword emoji, of course, in honor of all of these lesbian necromancers. And anyways, that is the end, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye-bye!